Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the tradinganalyst.com. This is Taylor. Uh, we're going to take a look at um, the chart here for the S&P 500. I'm going to go over some specific levels, uh, but first I wanted to kind of go over, uh, I'm going to briefly touch on each of these issues um, that a lot of people um, are talking about. And if you're not talking about it or concerned about it, I'm just going to go over uh, a lot of reasons here that I think the market um, is bullish. And this doesn't mean that the market is going to blast off tomorrow uh, to new all-time highs, although that is very possible and, and it could happen. But this is just an argument. Essentially, you know, I should change the uh, title here to not bearish. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the reasons that the market is not bearish, all right, because a lot of people here, um, sentiment is very low. A lot of people uh, on my YouTube comments or on stock twits and Twitter when I'm posting these uh, my charts and everything like that, um, a lot of people um, are bearish and come at me with uh, bearish uh, comments. So I'm kind of going to discuss a lot of reasons here where I think the market is not uh, bearish. Okay. For example, the first point here is cash on the sidelines. And what this means is um, a lot of people have uh, their money um, not invested in the market. Typically, when you see uh, a euphoric uh, market, which is typically when uh, the market likes to correct, um, similar to how we did in um, 2018, the market was just going straight up, straight up, straight up, and it had very little retracements, and then it just crashed lower. Okay, That's a euphoric market. What we're seeing right now is really just kind of a rest. But anyways, this cash on the sidelines, I'm going to show you this image here. And this is, let me move my face out of the way so you can see this. Um, this is uh, showing you uh, global fund managers. I know it's a little bit blurry right here, but this is um, a survey that was uh, put out for global fund managers in October of this year okay and global fund managers said that their biggest position where they had the most money allocated was in cash you can see this big the blue bar that's the biggest blue bar right here and it says cash right there so what that means guys is that we have a ton ton of cash on the sidelines all right euphoric markets are coupled with everyone's invested, everyone's bullish, that's euphoria. Right now we're seeing so many people who are cautious. Um, you can see that uh, the majority, <clears throat> the biggest position uh, that fund traders have is cash. That means they're not invested. So what that means is A, sentiment is low, which is very odd for being at almost at all-time highs. So what that means is when that happens, when you have this a disconnect between sentiment and price is that when price starts to move higher, these people who have cash on the sidelines, um, once they get a little more confidence, they're going to put that cash back into the market and they're going to push this market higher. Okay, so that's what that means. Uh, right now, we're seeing progress made in the tri China trade war. Things are really um, uh, taking a turn for the better. Um, you're seeing more progress being made. We're talking about um, a truce being made. I don't need to get into the uh, details, but you've seen the headlines. You've seen what's been going on. There's progress being made. It looks like a deal um, is going to be signed in November. Um, the next thing here is a Brexit deal um, is making progress. Um, the market typically, or the market is responding uh, well to this news and has responded well to it in the past as well. So Brexit is good for the market. Oh, uh, we've got, uh, and then I'm not trying to get uh, political here, but uh, standing presidents are um, good for the market. Typically the market uh, retraces um, at uh, the end and beginning of presidential terms, okay? So for example, um, the last, uh, bear market started at the end of uh, Bush's last year. 
and then the new bull market started with um, Obama taking office. Same thing happened with uh, Clinton and the senior Bush um, before him. Um, the other thing here um, is that uh, the market likes Trump. That's just a fact. Um, you can see when he got elected, the market just took off. Literally that, that day that he got elected, the market took off. So the market likes Trump. Um, whether you want to vote for him or not, doesn't matter to me. We're not talking about politics. We're just talking about how it affects the market. Um, the next thing here, oh, and the other fact here is that only 10 presidents in the history um, have not been reelected to a second term. So it's very likely, um, and his uh, approval ratings are very high. So um, I definitely think he'll get reelected, um, and that'll be good for the markets. Um, the next thing here is that the most important stocks are uh, hitting new all-time highs just recently, uh, today. Apple, JP Morgan, um, this is the, Apple's the most consu uh, important consumer stock. Uh, JP Morgan is the biggest uh, bank out there, um, and they just hit all-time highs. Microsoft just hit all-time highs. Nike, another consumer stock, just posted good earnings and broke out to new all-time highs. So you've got these really strong stocks that lead the market um, performing really well. The next thing here is we've got rate cuts. Rate cuts. Rate cuts are um, typically uh, very good for the market. Um, not always, um, but uh, in recent history, a lot of people um, have kind of a... a short-sighted memory. Um, you can see that if you look back at uh, the 2000, uh, 2001 bear market, it started when we started raising rates. Or I'm sorry, started when we uh, started lowering rates. Same thing with the 2008 uh, crash as well. But if you look back and study many times before that, there's been 11 rate cuts in the history of the Fed. And six out of those 11 times um, were coupled with rising stock prices, okay? Rising stock prices. The next thing here is that we've got um, the restarting of QE by the Fed, all right? Last time we did that was, uh, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe um, at the 2009 bottom. That was a big reason that um, we ended up heading higher, and we're doing QE again. Um, yeah, we're not at the bottom of the bear market, but we're at highs, so if that's good for the market, that means we're going to go higher, okay? The next thing here, uh, oops, left out a T here, um, is that, uh, and we're going to get to the charts right after this. The next thing here is that the market dropped 20% to end 2018. Okay, a lot of people have uh, short-term memories here, they forget that, that was a 20% drop. That's a big drop. Um, this is uh, typically um, considered a bear market. Um, it didn't. A lot of people don't uh, didn't call it a bear market. Um, that's just the headlines didn't say a bear market, but it was a bear market because anything 20% or more um, is considered a bear market. And it was very short. It was only three to four months. Um, so a lot of people didn't really um, consider that um, a, a bear market, but it was. And regardless of whether you want to call it a bear market or not, it doesn't really matter, but there has never been, <clears throat> excuse me, there has never been two 20 per stops or more within five years of each other. So let me repeat that. There has never in the history of the market, going back hundreds of years, never been two 20% drops or more within five years of each other. So we just had that 20% drop at the end of 2018. So that means that, again, anything can happen in the market. Just because it hasn't happened uh, doesn't mean that it can't happen. But the only thing we have in the market is to base our future decisions on is based off of history and what's happened in the past. So based off of history and what's happened in the past, there's a very strong chance, very, very, very strong chance 
that we won't see another 20% drop or more um, until 2024, okay? So about five years from now. Um, so you're going to be waiting for a long time before some kind of big uh, drop. That doesn't mean the market's going to blast off or anything from here. Um, I do think that it it is going to be set for higher prices. Um, uh, but just as far as people looking for some huge bearish drop, um, I don't think you're going to see that. So now let's go to the charts. So we're looking at the S&P 500 um, chart here going back. Um, a year of action, okay? So what we've got here is, to me, uh, what looks like a massive um, continuation pattern, or you can call it a bull flag, you can call it um, a triangle, it doesn't really matter, um, but it is a um, consolidation pattern. So what I, what I mean by that is you have this big trend up here um, to start the year, and then now we've pretty much just been resting here trading sideways, all right? Um, and you can see that by this action here. You can see that this action here, over here to the left of your screen, was a big trend up, okay? Over here you can see there's a little trend up, and then we retraced, and then a little trend up, and then we retraced. So essentially just back and forth action, all right? So, and we're coming into the top of this um, uh, action here. So most likely, I think we'll break out over this level, whether it happens, you know, uh, tomorrow or the next day, or whether we come down here and retrace back to the bottom side again, and then bounce. Um, ultimately, I think we will be um, heading higher. At the very worst, what I think could end up happening is we end up um, kind of chopping around. Let me remove these levels. Uh, chopping around for a little while longer between, you know, these these levels right here, okay? Um, typically, and this is another thing that I want to mention too, is that typically during pre-election years, which we are currently in, um, you see a lot of sideways trading um, in the market. That just happened, you know, recently. I'll just go back to uh, right here. This was, uh, when was it? Uh, yeah, this was um, the action um, before uh, Trump got elected. I believe this is where he got elected right here. Um, and you can see the market uh, loved that and, and blasted off uh, higher. But anyways, we were trading sideways virtually um, for the previous two years almost. Um, so that's very similar. Uh, oops to what we're seeing right now. Just a lot of sideways action. This is very normal for a pre-election year, okay? So, um, that doesn't mean we're gonna continue trading sideways, it just means um, it could happen, um, and if it did, it would be totally normal. Um, the other thing I wanna mention too is that we are making, uh, like I mentioned uh, previously, we are making higher lows, okay? So this is bullish. We're still making higher lows. We have not made a lower low. Okay, so until that happens, um, and I'm really just arguing for a not bearish case, okay, a not bearish case. Um, so until that happens, if we break this level, if we break about 2,800, um, to me, that would be the signal to get bearish, okay? But right now, and the way to trade the markets and invest in the markets, um, and really just a way to live your life, is to not live in fear of the unknown. Right now, we what we know is that the market is an uptrend, isn't an uptrend. It's making higher lows, higher highs, and we're right at all time, almost to all time highs, with a consolidation pattern that typically results in an upside move. We know this is what we know. What we don't know is that uh, the economy is going to go into a recession. We don't know that. It is not in a recession right now, okay? We don't know <clears throat> uh, that the trade deal isn't going to go through. Well, right now, uh, they're showing progress, um, and uh, and it's looking like um, it's going to happen. I'm not going to touch on all the issues I talked about earlier, but the point here is you don't want to be trading and living in fear. 
um, because it's based off of an unknown thing. If we break this level here and the trade deal doesn't go through and Brexit doesn't happen and all of a sudden we reverse QE and the rate cuts and everything like that and we start to go into a recession, then we can look for a bearish case. But right now, all the information that we know is bullish. Uh, not all, but the, the majority of the uh, case here is to the bullish case. Obviously, if you look at one single data point out there, there's going to be something out there um, that's going to be um, bearish. But the overwhelming evidence um, is that we're seeing a bullish case in the market. So let me give you some specific levels here. Um, so this is a more zoomed in uh, look on the S&P 500. Again, here's this trend line down here, which if we do head lower, I think that's going to be another great buying opportunity against this um, trend line. Um, and that trend line right now is right around 2900 on the S&P 500. Now we have this resistance over here. And this is the uh, lower rail or the um, trend line. We also have just a flat top resistance right here at about um, 3,020. Okay, so 3,020 is going to be the level that you want to break over um, on a closing basis. We're almost there, but we're not quite there. First, we have to break over this downtrend line. I think that could signal um, the start of a breakout. But the true breakout to me is going to be a breakout um, over this 3020 level uh, right there. Okay. Now again, it's pre-election year. We could trade sideways for a little longer, um, but to me, a dip would be a great buying opportunity, um, just like this was. And in fact, um, we got long here at the tradinganalyst.com uh, on some call, or yeah, on some calls right here at this lower rail um, support. We also, um, you know, and a lot of uh, if you're following me on stock twits, you know, I post a lot of, um, uh, just to put it <laughs> in a, to paraphrase it, um, a lot of perma bull stuff, but I go short all the time. We have two short positions um, uh, right now in individual stocks um, on uh, Beyond Meat, uh, which is going really well. Um, and another one in, uh, another one I don't want to mention because it's still right at our, uh, entry and I, uh, only share those with, um, members here. But I only short crap stocks that are, uh, uh in a downtrend, which beyond me and the other one, um, is, okay? I'm not shorting Apple. I'm not shorting Microsoft. I'm not shorting JP Morgan. I'm shorting the crap stocks because you want to be long the good stocks and you want to be short the crap stocks. Um, that's just going to give you um, uh, better chances of success. So anyways, I'm just pointing that out because a lot of people think that I um, only do long trades, but uh, that's just not true. Uh, I'm just very selective with my short trades um, and that works out extremely well um, in bull markets, which we are in. Okay, so these are the levels here, 30, 20. Uh, 2900 pay attention to those two levels here and you're going to do just fine I suspect we could get some kind of a retracement at this resistance once we get up there uh, maybe just a little retracement boom something like that uh, but I think that if we do reach these new uh, all uh, these highs again um, I think that um, it'll just be a matter of time before we uh, break over them um, if we kind of get rejected here at this downtrend line um, then the case for not reaching these highs becomes stronger. Uh, but again, that's an unknown right now. We've got a strong trend up making higher lows. Um, so I suspect we'll again make another higher low if and when we get a retracement lower. So those are the levels. Hopefully this video has helped you out. So you already know um, I run a private membership um, alert service here at thetradinganalyst.com. Um, I share uh, entries and exits all in real time via text message. So when you sign up and join today, um, you'll start getting those alerts right away. I'll start sending you real time trade alerts with both entries and exits. Um, and these are just a few examples. This is um, the trades we've had in the last couple of weeks. 
um, that have been closed out. We have about uh, eight or nine open positions right now um, that are all going extremely well. Um, but these are the closed out uh, trades that we've uh, closed out recently. Uh, you can see the, those puts uh, that I mentioned here um, on uh, SPY. Uh, that was a very nice win. You can see we got the SPY calls for an average gain of almost 10%. Uh, Facebook, Roku, uh, very, very nice results um, in the last couple weeks. Um, these are swing trades. We don't do any day trades um, or scalping or anything like that. So it's perfect for the working professional, um, stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home dad, um, or a student, or just someone that has a busy lifestyle. As long as you got your cell phone, um, I can send the alerts out via email. Um, I just had someone that I was uh, talking to, a prospective member. Um, he's living in the uh, Himalayas, so he needs the alerts to be sent out uh, via email so we can work with you um, to get those alerts to you um, no matter what. So I encourage you to sign up and join today. Um, these are real trades sent in real time um, that give you a high chance of success. Uh, we use a low risk, high reward um, strategies for every single one of our uh, trades. You can see here we did have a loser um, uh, on Apple puts right here, but you can see here this is only 12% compared to all of the gains. You know, 64%. This one was uh, not as big as the spy calls um, was less than this uh, loss here, but all the other trades were more than double, triple um, the size of this one loss. So we keep our losses small. Um, and we let our run, our winners run, all right? So in addition to these uh, trades, uh, trade alerts, you're also going to get private member-only videos um, where I discuss the current market uh, as well as our open positions, uh, the positions we're looking to uh, trade, um, as well as any other uh, questions. If I get a question from a member, I cover it in the video, uh, as well as um, in addition to that, you're going to get access to the watch list and the open position list um, so you can track the stop loss and the targets that we have for all of the positions. But most importantly, you're going to get winning trades just like this with real-time prices sent directly to your cell phone and it's going to put money in your pocket. So I look forward to seeing you in there and I hope that you join.